Let's proceed with today's topic. Now let us start with today's topic of turgidity. So what is happening generally the root hairs of a plant cell are permeable to water. Now the cell sap inside the vacuole it contains salts and sugars and is highly concentrated. Now if the cell is surrounded by water the osmosis will cause the water to enter the cell sap. Now as a result what will happen the vacuole would try to expand more and more. So as it is surrounded by uh, water which wants to enter this uh, cell uh, sap and as a result the vacuole would expand pushing the cell cytoplasm against the cell wall. Now eventually what is happening here a condition has arisen where no more water can enter the cell. So such a condition where the cell cannot accommodate any water any more water entry by osmosis is called turgid condition and uh, the, the cell is called turgid cell and the condition is called turgidity. So is it clear to everyone? So in this case the cells are unable to accommodate any more water. So they will be fully swollen and that swollen cell is called a turgid cell. Now let us move on to the opposite of turgidity that is flaccidity. Now opposite of turgidity is flaccidity. So what is happening here it is just reverse of turgidity. So flaccidity when how we can say that the cell is in a flaccid condition. If a cell is placed in a hypertonic solution. So hypertonic means the water the water outside the cell will be more concentrated and the, the water moves out of the cell due to osmosis. So here the water is lost from the cell. The vacuole shrinks and the cell loses its shape. So just the opposite of what was happening in a turgid cell is happening in a flaccid cell. What is happening here? So we can see just pole opposite of turgid cell is happening in a flaccid cell. So here water enters and it is in the such a condition where no water can enter. More, no more water can enter the turgid cell. And what is happening in a flaccid cell? So as it is placed in a hypertonic solution, the water tries to move out due to osmosis. But the cell cytoplasm here shrinks and the plasma membrane will withdraw from the cell wall. So it has shrunken in such a way that it has withdrawn itself much more away from the cell wall. And the cell here is called a vac the flaccid cell and we can see the vacuole is shrinking, the cell is losing its shape and this phenomenon is called flaccidity. So the previous phenomenon was called turgidity and this is called flaccidity. Now how this all happens they are all related to the tonicity. We have uh, studied about hypertonic solution, isotonic solution and hypotonic solution. So you sh should go through all these three types of solution where I have taught. I have taught in the previous videos. So I think you should go through it. If you have not gone through my tonicity video I am putting the link here above. Go through it then it will be clear. Then how a cell when we are putting in different types of solution becomes a turgid cell and in what kind of solution it becomes a flaccid cell. So let us move on to the next one. Here comes another new term that is related to turgidity. What is it? It is turgor pressure. So what is it? Now we can see that the cell is uh, in a turgid cell it is producing a high pressure against the cell wall. So the pressure of the cell contents against the cell wall is called the turgor pressure and the pressure exerted by the cell wall on the cell contents is called the wall pressure. So the inside contents are also producing a pressure on the cell wall and as the cell wall is rigid enough the cell wall producing an, is producing an equal and opposite force that is called the wall pressure. But do we see this kind of pressure in a flaccid cell? No. So I think you can make out the difference in a flaccid cell 
as it is uh, shrunken from inside and we can see that they uh, they don't exert the cell contents don't exert any pressure on the cell wall so this happens only in case of a turgid cell and this pressure is called the turgor pressure when the cell contents uh, they put a pressure against the cell wall so the next uh, topic let us see what is there now let us see the uses of turgor pressure how is it used so first of all turgor pressure helps for the enlargement of the cells they provide support to the living tissues like parenchyma uh, they help the they help the leaves for fully expanded and oriented towards light rapid movement of leaves in mimosa podica uh, that we can say that the touch me not when we are touching and it's just um, that movement that in touch me not plant is in response to touch is due to the turgor movement flowers soft stems and other soft parts of a plant are able to maintain their shape due to turgidity or turgor pressure now this turgor pressure it, it checks on the entry of water into the cell whether water is entering the cell or not it keeps a check on the excessive entry of water so it checks on the excessive entry of water into the cells and turgor pressure in root cell builds up the root pressure now in the next topic we will be discussing next slide what is this root pressure now here we will see that how the opening and closing of the stomata this uh, opening and closing of stomata is depending on this turgor pressure so let us see how the stomata is working on this turgor pressure now here comes the stomata so what is happening why does uh, uh, and why and how does this turgor pressure is affecting the stomata cells so this is stoma open and this is stoma closed now what is happening during photosynthesis the glucose is synthesized from carbon dioxide and water now this causes what this causes an increase in osmotic pressure of the contents of these guard cells these two are guard cells that increases the osmotic pressure of these guard cells and these guard cells absorb more and more water from the neighboring cells and they become too much turgid and this high turgor pressure they are creating a pressure on the walls so osmotic pressure is increased they are absorbing more water from outside and their turgor pressure they are pressurizing the cell so this turgor pressure high turgor pressure helps to open bulge the actually bulge the guard cells and the stoma opens so they are pressing the cell wall they are bulging so as they are bulging and swelling the guard cells they they are bulging out and the stoma is opening and in contrast what is happening at night since there is no photosynthesis no increase in osmotic pressure so what is happening so water is not being absorbed by these guard cells they are in normal condition so they are neither shrinking nor they are swelling so they are not in a, any uh, different condition or different shape they are neither applying turgor pressure to the cell walls what which was happening here so now the stoma is closed so this is how the turgor pressure is affecting the the movement of this guard cells so how does it affect this now for the, for that the osmotic pressure the water from the outside is being taken inside and it is changing the shape of the guard cells as it is applying turgor pressure and they are opening the stoma and at night the reverse is happening no turgor pressure no increase in the um, uh, turgor pressure so no change in shape or no bulging out of the guard cells and no opening of the stoma so the stoma is closed so is it clear to everyone so it is clear right if you are having any doubts or any queries please do write in my comment box and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that whenever i'm posting updates you can get it now let us see what is there in the next slide 
here comes another new term that is root pressure so what is root pressure root pressure is developed actually in the roots due to continuous inflow of water by cell so which helps in pushing the plant sap upwards is called a root pressure now here see this diagram and let us do one experiment that is called the root pressure experiment so how we can do that now we can take a well watered plant in a pot so any plant we can take so cut it a few centimeters above uh, here suppose we are cutting the plant few centimeters above the soil and immediately we are fixing a glass tube over the cut and we are uh, with the help of a rubber connection we are tubing this end so we are with a strong rubber tubing we are connecting it so that it should not be a loose glass tube so what we will see we will observe that from this cut end of the plant it exerts a pressure and water starts coming out so this water level after some time it is rising through the glass tube we can see that this water level is rising and this upward movement of water due to heavy pressure so where from where the pressure is coming that is the root pressure because it is was a well watered plant the roots are absorbing water from the soil and this water is being pushed upwards so this washed water is being pushed upward through the stem to the tip of the plant so this huge root pressure uh, helps the plant to take water to the uh, to each and every part of the plant including the leaves including the tip of the plant so this is an experiment we can cut it 2 inches above we can fix it a glass tube we can tightly tie it with a strong rubber tubing and after some time if we are fixing a clamp here uh, to uh, make that glass tube uh, in a fixed condition after some time we'll see that gradually the water is rising so this is a very easy experiment to see how the root pressure is increasing so uh, dear students this is all for today so we have learned today about turgidity flaccidity turgor pressure root pressure so these are the new terms i have explained today so please do go through all each and every point if you are having any doubt please do ask me and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you keep on getting the updates so as of now today uh, it's completed so next video will be on plasmolysis and deplasmolysis thank you